Hello everyone, welcome to Bose 211 Get Spun. Today I'm going to change out my wire former so that I can uh, twist larger wire. So I just thought I'd show you the process of doing that. Uh, I'm going to remove my wedge block uh, first, then I'll remove my wire former um, die, my twister shaft, and replace those parts, and then I'll remove my revolving die and replace that with the bigger revolving die for the 51 thou wire that I'm going to twist. So I like to start out by taking the, the wedge block off first. It just makes life easier when you're taking off the uh, the twister die because um, you can get your allen key in there easier. You don't have to fight to uh, get past that wedge block with it. <clears throat> My former is set up right now to twist a smaller loop um, in smaller spinners and uh, I've been asked to make some larger stuff for hunting muskies and uh, I got the uh, components in this week to, to start doing that so I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a video and show everybody how that works. Okay, I've got those parts out. I'll take my handle off my shaft. There's a washer that goes on there as well. So that has to slide out this way. That way you have to take all those components off. twister shaft back in there. Make sure you put your washer back on. I've been known to forget that step once in a while. And typically when you put your handle back on if you have everything flush um, to the handle you should line up pretty close to where your uh, twister die goes. But I like to not do that screw up yet. I put my twister die on and uh, make sure everything's correct. Um, nothing worse than getting it all back together and finding that your shaft is running through there too far and hitting your hitting your die when you're trying to twist your wire. And these are pretty small screws so I use caution not to cross thread them. They're a fine thread and uh, I don't want to have to wait for a week to get replacement parts if I cross thread something, so just take it nice and slow and make sure everything's aligned before you start threading them in. And because they're a fine thread, you don't have to torque them in super tight when you're, when you're finished, when you're tightening your screw up. Just snug is good. not touching your die. Nice and snug. And what I do is I just grab that and I start threading it on. Um, there's a notch in the block that is going to face your uh, shaft. And that's important that it faces that way so you twist it right. Uh, before I tighten it up I drop the block into the or the wedge into the block there to make sure everything's aligned and then torque it in. <coughs> Next step we'll have to remove one of the screws out of this uh, guide here. Slide that back out of the way so that you can get at your revolving die. Pop the handle off. It just slides right out the top. It's got a flange on the bottom side that stops inside the body here. Drop that back in there. And then 
when I do my twisting, I like my die to stop just on the point of this. Uh, it just makes life easier for making your loop. Um, make it a nice round loop. If, if, you, if you don't set it like that, it seems to offset your loop, make things look a bit crooked. Not that it wouldn't function that way, but I'm just fussy, so. Nice and tight. And then when I put my handle back on, I like to make sure everything's sitting nice and flush here. Tight against there, line everything up. And put my screw back in nice and tight. Make sure everything spins. Everything works, functions. Okay. So, we've done that. Now we're going to go to the process of assembling our, our lure. Uh, I have a 51 thou wire that I purchased already twisted on one end that's got a loop in it. Um, so I'm going to drop a 8 millimeter uh, orange bead on there. And then I've got a 3 8 ounce brass body that's going to go on top of that. <coughs> then I've got a 3 16 brass bead that goes on top of that. Sorry, I guess you're not seeing that very well there with my... And then my clevis is going to go onto there. And a size 6 French blade. Put that on. Another 3 16 brass bead on top of that. Make sure everything spins freely. I'm going to lay our wire into our wire former. This is a fairly long wire and it's heavy. It's heavy wire so you need to leave yourself extra tail when you twist it because it does take up a fair bit of space as it twists on. So I leave myself approximately an inch from the former body to my first bead. I twist that around cut it off and I leave approximately an inch from the loop to, to there. Cut that off. And then we'll twist this up, put our bend in there, put our V into that. It comes up to the twister. And this wire is quite heavy, so I found that you have to hold your wire into the into the loop former and push your wedge down into it and hold it down nice and tight and then you'll hold good pressure against your handle so when you twist it you get a nice tight loop it's such big wire that if you don't hold it tight it will push your hands back and you'll you'll get a like a coil spring almost effect so I'm gonna keep it nice and tight twist it up we get a nice tight loop there and uh, you'll notice that these new dies I've bought have a bit bigger loop than the original wire that I bought. It's not going to affect the function of this lure at all. And uh, it makes a nice round loop. So next we're going to add our split ring. And we're going to add that to the bottom end. Install that. And we've done up some size one treble hooks with uh, orange, uh, fluorescent orange, fluorescent green, and yellow uh, marabou on them. And uh, that's going to be the hooks we use on these new lures that we're doing. And uh, we'll install that on there. I'll make sure it spins nice and free does. These lures weigh about three quarters of an ounce so they're quite heavy. Uh, Going to be using for targeting uh, large pike, musky, uh, lake trout, whatever, whatever, whatever the monsters are that you want to go after. Uh, this should stand up to that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like. Um, 
and subscribe. Hit the reminder bell so that you don't miss any further content from GOES211. Um, and if you want to buy these products, you can check them out at uh, fishingandoutdoors.ca or for our American friends, uh, fishingandoutdoors.net. Thank you and tight lines, everyone.